person, we celebrate what can be virtual, you know, on the screens, when we see a choir like we've seen in the past, but to see children and see in their faces the expressions of what they're offering and the joy that they know they're bringing that into this house, uh, where God calls us for worship, for praise, and for everything that's on your heart and mind that you bring here today. We can't leave everything at the door when we come in. We bring our needs with us, and we bring brokenness with us, and we bring frustration with us, but we also bring thanksgiving. We bring praise. We bring uplifted voices because God has done everything for us, and we praise him for that. And in this time, I put this word on your heart to prepare you for the message today affliction. In all the different ways that word might mean to you right now, affliction. We'll be spending some time talking about that in just a little bit. So as we begin our service today, following the way our children began already for us, let's stand and let's ask in this opening song that God would open the eyes of my heart.
Father, we live in times of much affliction. And as we might even recognize in all of our lifetimes here, we haven't seen such affliction, such division as we see today. And not just in our nation, but as it's trickled down even into workplaces and friendships and even more into our own homes and even this house of worship. Heavenly Father, we pray your spirit continue to work in us, opening the eyes of our hearts, opening our ears for the truths your word reveals, truths that we can share and truths that we can show. Bless our lives each day as your people. We are truly in these afflicted times blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. We've thought about for a few minutes now how that word affliction is part of our day and the different things that come to us that overwhelm us, what we say, rather than just affliction as some kind of physical or mental kind of illness or disease, anything that wears us down, anything that works its way to turn us away from the joy that the Spirit plants in us. And our days can take that joy and kick it to the curb. Throw it away. Because affliction comes out of our sins. And sin always wants to do its absolute worst in our life. It wants to rob you of joy. It wants to strip away peace and comfort. And even in times like this of much affliction, we still have so much more to be thankful for. And that's why we come together to support one another. We have so much more to say thank you, God, for, while we have so much to lift up in our prayers. Follow on the screen today these words from Paul's letter in 1 Thessalonians. And as I read it, Hear how it has impacted your life, how you are showing this, these qualities. Make it personal, just as Scripture should always be made in our life. There's an introduction first. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in the power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. I want to read some of those words again because if we're hearing it differently, we are going to misunderstand what it's telling us. I'm going to read it in a way that might make you wonder, is that what it's saying? 
you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Well, the way I read it that time makes it sound like it's the word that's causing the affliction. That's not the message of this verse. You received the word in much affliction. Into that affliction in your life, you received the word, the gospel. That word from God came in to your afflicted life. And the result was, now you have the joy of the Spirit. And now you're an example to all of those around you. Into all of our afflictions comes the healing word of God. In these times, we might, some of us might even have a little more difficult time knowing what to say to others. We share so much in common right now, but does that mean our Christian witness is in equal measure? Does it mean we're taking advantage of every opportunity to talk about the hope that we have? Even we're sharing afflicted times. Look how much more we share through Christ. What we know about him. What we believe about the triune God. What the Bible has taught us. What it continues to reveal to us all of our life. Let's say those words that have always taught us from childhood on up what we, members of Christ's body, the church, believe and confess. We say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remember the two words that you used to start that confession. I believe. With this confession, you're already equipped to share the reason for your hope. You can bring your life as the greater witness because right now we share so much, so much in common. So the song that comes, well, it doesn't show you've got to look a certain way, sound a certain way, be anybody that stands out. In fact, you look at the title of this next song, this is all God has ever expected and asked. Please rise, join me in singing, come as you are.
Keep that screen up there. And everyone just take a look at the words. And as you see those words, think of how you are today. What you didn't leave at the door because you just can't cast it off. But what you bring into this house, because this is where God's healing is offered in word and sacrament. How have you come today? Please be seated. You got a little extra number of pieces of paper in the handout for today, but I ask you to take out the, not just an outline, it's really just an apologetics kind of help for you this week, especially as we think of a sermon and a message that is titled Healing for Deep Affliction. Because as I shared earlier before, for the, at least the Thessalonians Paul was talking to, they weren't afflicted because of the word the Apostle Paul shared. It was into their weakness and their struggle and their affliction that the joy of God's word was worked by the Spirit. So as I just asked you a moment ago, what did you bring in with you today? What burdens did you bring in with you? What cares and what concerns and what hurts? What struggles? What disappointments? What did you bring in that you just can't turn off? Because you don't take it out the same way now. Come as you are and lay it before the Lord. When it overwhelms us, somehow we've already chosen to hold on to it. For some reason, we truly have convinced ourselves, I can handle this, after all, everybody else is going through it. But not everybody else has the joy of the Spirit. Not everybody else around you has the hope of Jesus. Not everybody else around you has the knowledge of Scripture passages that you can fall back on. So into whatever afflictions you have comes the joy of the Word of God, the work of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's called a fruit of the Spirit. You see on that little handout, it's just part of a list, but it begins with love. The Bible says, love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. When we have godly love in our life, it opens a door to receive the joy of knowing his love. The joy of knowing what Jesus has done and humbly receiving that blessed sacrament that he gives to his church, his body and blood. There's joy in that sacrament. Even though it reminds us of a sacrifice, there's joy in receiving. And that's where God wants you to come as you are. Come willing to receive. You're already coming with hurts and anxieties, but be as willing to receive what he has to offer. Now I've asked you on that side a couple questions at the bottom. What single words or phrases would describe your own experience with affliction? What do you feel afflicted by in your life today? What just eats away at you? And it's not as easy as turning it off, but it's there with you when you get up, it's there with you when you're trying to sleep, it's there with you throughout the day, if you can identify the afflictions, then you can do the next thing. Give how it makes you feel a name. 
And let's keep that simple. Keep it to one word. Just a number of single words. How do your afflictions leave you feeling? Now, I'm not, it's not silence waiting for responses. Honestly, think of the words that describe exactly how afflictions that come to you make you feel, leave you feeling. They're there at the end of the day, and it seems they're right there in the morning, ready for you. Now, it takes time to learn a confession of faith like we speak and not have to rely on a page or a screen. But sometimes we do need to rely on a page or a screen. But what scriptures have come into your life from being raised at home, hearing from godparents, your sponsors that have prayed for you, they stood right there with you when that new life began in Christ, scriptures you've heard in a life of worship, other classroom experiences and events that have brought the word of God right to you, because of those words that describe the afflictions and how they affect you, what passages from the Bible have you armed yourself with to meet that affliction so it doesn't rule your day and it doesn't have the last word when you're trying to sleep at night? What scriptures do you fall back on? And more than that, do you share them? Because others may not know those passages. And they've been in your mind so long that you've just kind of maybe assumed they're just going to be there. You take them for granted. They're there because you've heard them. You count on them. And now maybe you can share them. There are so many. But on your sheet, if you turn it over, I wanted to provide a starting place. Sometime today, and I hope before you go to bed tonight, Sometime today, with all of these passages on this side of the Bible, on this side of the insert, underline all the words and phrases that bring you hope and joy when you're afflicted, when you're just filled with everything that's going on. Pick those verses, add them to this sheet, and then underline words and phrases that absolutely bring hope and joy. Read with me that first passage up to the second set of those three dots, those periods of ellipsis. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, so we do not lose heart. Because if all you know is feeling crushed, I'm sorry, afflicted, perplexed, persecuted, struck down, then you will lose heart. You will lose the ambition and the drive for the day. It only wears you down. These things cannot build you up ever. They only tear down. Don't lose heart if these phrases and words remind you of affliction. Read it with me again. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. So we do not lose heart. Joy comes into that moment of affliction because God knows it's when you're burdened, when you're afflicted, when you're perplexed, when you're persecuted, when you're struck down. He's there. And He's bringing you His promise. He's there with you to lift you up. Some of the favorite psalms of many Christians, and that's why I've listed four of them, 
Read Psalm 18, verse 1 with me. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. That whole verse might be underlined later today. I love you, O Lord, because you're my strength. So we all know what weakness feels like. Emotional weakness, physical weakness, mental weakness, all sorts of weakness. We all know what that feels like. And God knows that that wears us down. But the psalmist says, I love you because you're my strength. Maybe there's been some quick fixes in the world when we've been beaten down. And something picked us up momentarily. But as well, as we saw at the end of that verse right above it from 2 Corinthians, the things you see are transient. They're here and they're gone. What lasts are the things that are eternal. Sometimes what are unseen. And these are the gifts of God we celebrate because they don't go away with the setting of the sun. They're there for you the next morning to hold on to. He's your rock, your refuge, your shield. I can't imagine most of us not underlining the whole verse. Psalm 23, we all know so well. Again, it's because we've said it so many times. It's there in our minds. We can fall back on it without any effort. But just read the first sentence with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And just stop right there. Because the Lord God is my shepherd and he sent the good shepherd that I can follow him, I'm not going to be in want. But we'll feel like we're in want when we're not recognizing he's given us everything we need. Everything from the gift of baptism and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to the faith that is in us and the word sometimes to share it to the sacrament that also assures us of forgiveness and through forgiveness eternal life. These things aren't transient. They're how God brings us closer to him and defines a relationship. The Lord's my shepherd. So I will not want. Read Psalm 27, verse 1 with me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now, some people hearing this through Facebook today or later today might appear to hear these words of Scripture as, wow, you mean if I believe this, if I know this, it's going to just take away the hurt. And it's going to take away the affliction. And it's going to take away the weakness. The Word of God's not a bandage. A bandage doesn't work healing. God alone works healing in our life. He gave Jesus to be the great physician and a healer of our soul, of our mind, of our bodies. And when we hear these words, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? It doesn't mean that Christians aren't afraid sometimes. We are afraid. But when we're done being afraid, we know who to turn to. We turn to our Father, who invites us with these words from Psalm 50 we share. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. There is one thing that unites us as a nation today. Division. Sounds like an oxymoron, I guess. 
The one thing that seems to unite us as a nation is our continuing divisions. Think of all the things that have warred against unity in just this year. Everything that of this sinful world has tried to pull us down and weigh us down and take away hope and take away joy. The things you've heard, the things you've seen, and it just keeps hammering on you. It's almost like that young child who's just learning to swim for the first time and they forgot what the lifeguard said you should take with you into the water. And the child's gasping for air because they're just sinking. In this storm-tossed sea we call life, who's your anchor? Who is able to hold you in place and then pick you up? Only our shepherd. Because everything of the world is temporary, it's transient. What God provides is eternal. That's why we turn to him. He calls us, invites us. I'll deliver you. But as some, one of the members of my confirmation class this morning reminded me, sometimes there are people out there that they're only looking for that answer. And if they don't get that answer, then God hasn't answered their prayer. Or if God answered it in a way that was not what they asked, then they're going to be upset with God because he didn't give them exactly what they asked for. And that's a challenge with prayers. When you pray to God for something specific, don't be blinded that that has to be the only answer he provides. You're lifting it up to him to say, this is what I'm lifting off my heart and off my soul, but I've got to trust that whatever your decision is, there's a long-term plan that I will understand. So that's why so many times some of the best Christian conversations you can have, it's with somebody who is far older than you are. They can look at a lifetime you haven't even lived that number of years yet. And they can tell you how it takes looking at the whole to see how God has worked in every circumstance. And it even took you longer to figure out what his answer was supposed to be. And you discovered it. And there's joy in that moment because you realized, once again, God was watching over. And God was protecting. And look what I can see looking back on his care. Some people can experience that earlier in life. But look back. When you're feeling burdened, look back. And look how God has worked the joy of his spirit and his comfort into those moments so far behind you, you don't even think of them anymore. And that'll be the strength for the next day, the next affliction. Our country needs our prayers. Our country, more than at any time in its history, needs Christians to do what only Christians do and do well. Our country needs Christians lifting up prayer after prayer after prayer that at this point we're unified in divisions. We're used to it. We accept it. But that's not what the plan of Christ is for his church. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. That's God's plan for Christ's church. And we're in it right now. So let's lift up the needs of this world and our lives and our afflictions in a closing prayer. Holy Spirit, inject an even greater measure of joy into our heart and life. It's far too easy to make choices that overwhelm us. It's far too easy to make choices that burden us. That's all around us every day. And it will never change 
on this side of heaven. But give us the eyes and the heart and the mind that seek after and learn the promises contained in the Bible and be armed with that knowledge to take the Christian fight into the next day and to have a reason for the hope we have to share with someone who's struggling right now. We are struggling as a nation. In our lifetime, we've never seen such division. But the Christian church has also been never so silent. Let us rise up for you with the strength of your spirit and lift up more prayers than we've ever offered and also be the example in all things godly to bring others to the knowledge of the hope we have in Jesus. In his precious name we pray. Amen. the little booklet that was part of what you received walking in today. Who doesn't have one? Because some people get here early and don't get one. Who doesn't have one? I, I know who you are. You're right up here. If you can hear me in the narthex, we need inserts up front. They can't hear me in the narthex. Oh, I think someone hears. Can you bring a half dozen packets up front? I'm sorry I didn't notice that up earlier here. You're listening to scriptures and you don't know where I'm looking. And you need that resource. So, Michael, can you go out there in the narthex and make sure we're getting some brought in? And make sure you have these booklets because we're going to be participating in some beautiful music, sharing prayers, And we're going to wait just a moment. So if you want to just play through our first hymn and we'll just kind of let that be our introduction. Because we want everybody to be a part of observing what this week celebrates Veterans Day. And perhaps in that celebration, we'll find unity in a way that's escaping this nation right now. How many of you got there, Michael? Oh, that's perfect. An even half dozen. <laughs> right behind you there, Mom. Over on this side. One here. Does anybody else need one? Thank you, Michael. God of our fathers, please stand and let's join in this opening hymn in a Christian observance of Veterans Day. God of our fathers whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the story band
God of love, peace, and justice, it is your will for the world that we live together in peace. You have promised through the prophet Isaiah that one day the swords will be beaten into plowshares. We live in a broken world, and there are times that war seems inevitable. Let us recognize with humility and sadness the tragic loss of life that comes in times of conflict. As we gather here, free from violent persecution, we give our heartfelt thanks for all those who have served with courage and honor. Protecting Father, we give you thanks for those members of our Holy Cross family who are currently serving on active or reserve duty. May your peace be with their fathers, mothers, siblings, spouses, and children. Almighty God, we praise you for all those who serve in the armed forces today. We pray that they all serve with honor, pride, and compassion. Do not let their hearts be hardened by the actions they take to defend and preserve life and liberty. Surround them with your love and peace. Preserving, Father, we give thanks for those who are in our presence today, who have served with pride this great nation and its many and varied people. We praise you for those that have served and put the welfare of others ahead of their own safety. May we all be inspired by their self-sacrifice to serve all those in need and live our lives in acts of loving service. Comforting Father, we remember in our prayers today all those who have suffered the death of a loved one during times of war and peace. We thank you for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. We ask your extra comfort for those who still feel the pain of their loss. Keep us mindful and strengthened by your promise to comfort all who mourn with the hope that is ours in Jesus. Providing, Father, we praise you for guiding us through leaders of the past those who penned with words the very freedoms we continue to celebrate, the freedoms that still guide our lives today. Let each of us honor all who have sacrificed for the peace we seek and enjoy. Let us never forget those who have served, and let us never forget your provision and promise of peace for those who serve today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated for this short video segment that reminds us in our offering envelope box this month is an additional envelope for Faith Comes by Hearing. The opportunities we've used in the past to provide a digital platform for Holy Scripture that those who are serving our nation today can listen to wherever they're deployed and be strengthened to also share the hope that they have. So please, watch and listen and respond to these words. Your church and churches like yours all over America have made it possible to send hundreds of thousands of military Bible sticks to U.S. servicemen and women. You have made a difference. To be able to just to have some headphones and something that could fit in your pocket and be able to plug it in and listen to uh, the scriptures, it was something that was uh, very fulfilling. Distributing, you know, the audio Bible to uh, men and women that are in the service is absolutely crucial. You know, in my own experience while I was overseas, this was the only uh, word that I got. You, you don't always have time to be able to open up, you know, the Bible and go through the pages. Not so much, not the time, but you, you're just not in a place meeting a real need for our troops. That's why your continued support of the Military Bible Stick Project is so crucial. Your family can support one Bible Stick for one service member and their family for just $25. A small gift that makes a big difference, getting the Bible to the battlefield. 
out there in the field, uh, you don't always have church. In fact, where I was at, I, I didn't have a church where I could go to. It's small. It could fit into your pocket or a piece of your gear. It's great when you get those moments to just kind of get away from everybody else. You need to get the scripture in you every day if, if you're going to really serve honorably and, and life-givingly in the military with today's stresses. The audio Bible, along with reading the Bible, it's perfect combinations to be able to really serve well and faithfully in all the activities that happen. And, and not only in my own life, but I've seen so many other members that that was the key to staying in the scripture while the, while the temple was so high. Hi, my name is Morgan Jackson, and I'm the director of Faith Comes By Hearing. And I have to tell you, I am so excited and thankful. Your church and other churches like you have been creating a movement among our military and supporting our chaplains in a way that's just unbelievable. Over a half a million of our men and women in the service are receiving a military Bible stick. Now, just a reminder, the military Bible stick is an audio player that has the whole New Testament and selected Psalms on it. Now, we don't want to leave out the family, so in the box, there is a request form. So this, they can request an audio Bible for their spouse or child, and we'll send them a kid's Bible or the New Testament for their spouse to listen to. We are having more requests than we can fulfill, which I'm happy about because that means there's a hunger in our military. This year alone, over 150,000 audio New Testaments, military Bible sticks will go out to over 1,400 chaplains. Now, they're asking us, so I'm going to ask you, can you help by providing each family one, which is $25, for a military service member? If your church could take it on a challenge of taking on a company, which is 100 that's $2,500. That would go a huge way to fulfilling the needs of the chaplains as they're requesting. I want to express their thanks. The chaplains just have story after story about how military men and women are coming to Christ, being encouraged, having comfort in times of extreme stress, and you're providing that. Thank you, and may the Lord richly bless you. So before we sing our final song in this observance, Please take the time to look in that box of offering envelopes for that one that was placed there this calendar year to return at some point before the end of November so that can be tallied and provide that additional support not only for those on active duty but as you heard for their spouses and their children so they can at least feel united even if by distance the faith that is growing together. Please rise as we conclude with the Eternal Father, strong to save.
brothers and sisters in Christ, as we enter into the celebration and the remembrance and the reception of the sacrament, the peace of the Lord be with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Please be seated and we'll begin with our pulpit side.
Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we lift up from our hearts. You're the creator of the heavens and the earth. You know the times we live in. And you're providing for our every moment. You are the helper and the defender of the weak. And you meet all of our needs in times of affliction and suffering. You know the weaknesses we struggle with. And you hear our every prayer. Protect and deliver us in these times, not only from illness, but also the needs of our nation. Watch over us. Protect and lead us. Especially grant your healing to those who are ill, not only with this virus, but also all who are in need of healing and recovery. Hear first the names of those we lift up in Christian love from our hearts. We add to our prayers this week Art and Audrey Prenzler, both hospitalized. And we pray that you would touch their bodies with the healing they need and give them both the strength to be able to return home together. Continue to grant that same care and recovery to Randy Dexter and also Judy Smith and all for whom we have prayed this day. Also grant relief from those who suffer each day in pain and an increase of comfort and of strength in the face of the grief of the passing of a loved one. Heavenly Father, we absolutely confess our national needs to you today. This nation needs your mercy and grace. This nation needs the restoration of hope. This nation needs your church to rise up and share and show the love and compassion that you give to all of us. Forgive us when we depend on ourselves far too often rather than turn to you. Forgive us for looking in every direction for help except above. Forgive us when we forget how much we need you. We come to you in our hearts. We bring our cares and our afflictions and our hurts. For only you can see where no one else can. Only you can understand when no one else does. You know the weight and pain that came with the cross of Jesus. So you know our burdens and our cares. You know we need to be delivered from them. And you know that this nation needs the work of the Spirit even more. So we finally pray that your Holy Spirit would touch the lives of all sinners who do not call upon the name of Jesus. Those who work in every way except for unity. Humble them all and humble our nation. That those who don't know you may hear and see the words and the actions of those who call upon the name of Jesus. So that all of us may turn from our sinful, selfish ways, lifting up our prayers in the name of Jesus, prayers that are heard, sins forgiven, so that an increase in healing may come to our land and the entire world. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us. The Lord keep us. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with his favor. And in the name of our Savior and Shepherd Jesus, give us peace. Amen. Please rise for our closing song of praise. seated. I do ask that you remain for just a few more minutes. We will go as quickly as we can through our ministry reports, but these are benefits that we have not